Since Dr. Yamashita has issued her challenge, we've received more cool questions from North Anglia students than Rahi's hit tennis balls. Oh, thank you so much for asking so many questions. I heard uh, that we received so many, many questions. I'm really looking forward to answering them. Hello, Dr. Yamashita, and greetings from Beausolet in Switzerland. My question is, what makes cells different from each other, and at what point do they start to become different? Wow, so Carol, that was really great, great question. So really interesting part of this is that all cells have exact same instructions, but they are completely, you know, they, they can do so many different things. So you can imagine the two cells just divided from one to two, they copied their instruction exact the same way. So they have exact the same instruction book in it. So one cell have a bookmark in one page over here, but another cell might have, uh, you know, the bookmark on a completely different page. That could initiate the, you know, the, the decision-making process and then for this cells and this cell to become completely different cell types. We've got a really creative submission from Deming in Beijing. Check it out. My question is, why? Why do cells organize together to form tissues, organs, systems? Okay. Oh my gosh, he! <laughs> I'm impressed. Why is an interesting question. If you are unicellular, you have to do everything by a single cell. But once you become multicellular, each cell's function might become a little bit more simple. Some cells only need to, uh, you know, the, to eat, meaning you know, to absorb the nutrients from the environment. And some other cells might eat, uh, to specialize itself in receiving the sunlight. I think you know the multicellular organisms use this multicellularity to make sure all cells live together well um, as a collection of the cells. This is Arav, and he's from the Oak Ridge International School in Bengaluru. He's wondering, how do cells know their instructions? Are they having a brain of their own? Hi, Araf. This is a really great question. Cells don't have a brain. Cells can make brain, but cells don't have a brain. So how it's, you know, cell itself is more like a machine. Each cell comes uh, with this instruction book. All those little cells comes with machinery how to read the book. Hi, Dr. Yukiko. I was, my name is Mila, and I would like to know if, um, Cells are different shapes and different colors. Hi Mira, that is a really great question. Probably cells don't come with much of the different colors. Um, they have a little bit of colors, but not much. But they come with completely different, so many variety of the shapes. Some cells are just round and small. Some uh, you are, you know, the immune cells that protect you from, you know, the bad stuff like, uh, you know, the virus or, you know, the bacteria. Those cells can change shapes to squeeze into small place and then to go all over your body. Hi, Dr. Yamashita. My name's Finn and I'm from Nastabai. I was wondering, what inspired you to study cells and why? Hey Finn, uh, that's a really fascinating question. This process of this tiny, tiny little cells can do all sorts of things to make our body completely functional. That is, for me, you know, a really mind-blowing process. I really wanted to know more. So thank you all for such a great questions. I had so much fun answering to those questions. I really look forward to seeing your final uh, the projects and then try to use you know the curiosity and the creativity to you know to go just wild and to think about what you might be able to do from just three things, but you can make so many different things out of it. That's exactly how cells are doing in your body every day.